Hey, welcome to the Brisbane Small Business Show. I'm Kevin Gammy. I've got John Huey with me. Is Huey the right pronunciation there, John? That is, that's exactly right. Just making sure. Uh, John is uh, with the organisation Carly, who um, has a very different way uh, about cars. We'll talk about that later because that's kind of a byproduct of the discussion that we're going to have today. Um, look, I've been uh, watching what John's been doing over the last month, I've got to say, and uh, he, he offers a different insight into different things. And and today he wants to talk about what's going to be the new normal. And I love this discussion because the more we talk about it, the more we start thinking about it, the more it becomes apparent some of the things that we can do to be ready for a different situation. Every, every crisis we come out of differently, okay? And that's that's one thing that we know. Uh, this is no doubt a crisis and we are gonna come out differently. So John, firstly, tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so um, I, I work primarily as a management consultant effectively, and this is what brought me to, to an organization called Carly. Um, and Lots of, lots of years in, in banking and financial services. I've done uh, my own startups uh, and I've owned businesses before, uh, one of which was a Bank of Queensland franchise. So I've had a good insight into small business and also the financial side of things. Um, but yeah, what I really love is technology. I love efficiency. Um, I like anything that's new, anything that obviously improves value and is scalable. So my background is very much around entrepreneurship. Um, my extended family uh, brought uh, the meal in a cup, sui min, which are the dried noodles to Australia quite some time ago. My uncle did that. And so I guess it's been in my blood since that time to obviously look at uh, business and small business startups. So small business, let's talk a little bit about that. Like we were talking about efficiency and flexibility and, and, and mm. small business has always been known for being uh, flexible and, mm. and, and you know, a lot of people haven't always thought about the efficiency of small business, but let me let you in on a little stat, okay? Now, these numbers are a little bit odd. We're going back three or four years. However, 45% um, of Australians are employed in small business, right? But we only produce 32% of the revenue. Yes. Now, big business is almost exact opposite numbers. It's, you know, they, they employ 31% of the population, and I think it's 44, 45% of the revenue that they right. produce. Yes. Now, when you extrapolate those numbers, what that tells you is that for every person in small business, for every dollar that that person produces, the equivalent person in big business is producing $2. Correct. Right? Now, we don't think about small business and efficient, but think about any big business you want to mention, BHP, Telstra, Optus, you know, any bank, halving their revenue tomorrow, where would they be? Correct. Right? Yes, so absolutely. Small business, small business is efficient. We can run on the smell of an oily rag already. Mm. Mm. However, we can do better. I know I'm, I'm with you. We can do much, much better. And mm. because so many of us are actually inefficient about the way we're being efficient, if that makes absolutely. sense. Absolutely. I mean, the three, yeah, you've hit, you've hit on a good point there around where have we come to? And I think it all really started in the late 80s when we, uh, floated the currency and it went from there. So big business has access to capital in the world at almost negative interest rates. They can raise money very easily. And so COVID-19 has made things difficult, yes. But um, the fact is through quantitative easing, which is essentially printing money uh, since the GFC, there is a lot of it everywhere. So that just allows big business to expand quickly. And that's one of the big advantages they have over small operations is they can open up box stores all over the country and gobble up small businesses. And that's been going on for a long time because they've got access to cheap capital. That's one of the challenges. However, the 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 distance between, I'm going to argue that the distance between big and small business has been shrinking, okay? Yeah. Um, my, my basis for this is we came out of the GFC. Prior to the GFC, it was only large corporates that could go and have offshore teams doing different things and saving money that way. Post GFC, it seemed like everybody had access to, you know, to people, uh, you know, whether they were yes. developers or call centers or whatever in yeah. countries where the where the wages were less. So, so that gap closed. Yeah. I actually feel that you know the the government during this time has decided that it's going to guarantee fifty percent of mm. uh, the capital mm. that mm. that banks lend small business um, yeah. up to a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. Um, and with that, banks are loaning money to small businesses 
Um, they've been given money to give to small businesses and, and, and they've been given very much a directive, you must. Mm. And so they still have to have it on sound business principles. However, it's not always with, and your house is on the line and this, yeah. that, and the next. So yeah. you know, I, I do think that the, you know, even that access to capital, if you have a good sound business plan, you will have access to capital. Just Absolutely. Like Look, uh, I, think, I think the virus too has, in my view, been a big slap in the face for the government in terms of some of the policies of nationalizing and essentially allowing investment uh, of large businesses to essentially take over and you know crush a lot of small enterprise however the interesting uh, irony or i suppose the paradox is small businesses where the votes is right so that's one of the reasons why they're quick to try and jump in and support small business their mums and dads and families out there you know employing a lot of other small smaller people uh, smaller businesses as well so that's where all the votes are, and that's why they're quick to try and support that. But I think COVID-19 and the crisis we're going through is going to have a very, very positive spin on uh, for small business. What we're all doing now for the first time in probably a long time is we're looking at supply chains. We're looking at where products come from. We're very, very focused internally now into our own local suburbs, our local communities, and we're looking to get behind and support those people that we see in the shopping center every day and that we obviously know and see hurting. So I think this is a good thing in the long run. Um, it's definitely sh shifted the national focus back onto small enterprise and Aussie entrepreneurship. And I think that's going to only benefit the country in the long term. And things like efficiency, uh, things like flexibility across all businesses, big and small, uh, are going to become, as I call it, the new black in the new normal. That's going to be what's needed. And, and, and you know, you've been watching our community for a while and, and that we've talked about. And, and you know that I'm not just singing a new song. I'm singing the same song I was singing, you know, two mm. years ago, three years ago, even five years ago. You probably don't know that. But I was saying if we could all be banded together and work with each other more, mm. we're not going to be affected. We're, not, we're going to be nowhere near. We will be safe from yeah. outside circumstances. Yeah. This is why I've created the different tools that we have at different uh, times of this group's, you know, I think this is why we created the directory so that we could easily find each other Absolutely. because as soon as you go hey i want you know you may have noticed anyone who's put in i'm looking for a new accountant over the last few weeks they've been smashed by 100 plus people then yeah. then trying to find someone is harder yeah. than just going and asking the mate so this I is what i think what, what you're doing is you're employing some of the tactics big business employs so i mean the reason we all go to bunnings is because it's convenient it's easy it's all there Right. Yeah. Um, we don't we don't go shopping three or four different hardware stores, not that many of them exist anymore because it's inconvenient. We don't have time. We're time poor. And big businesses exploited that. Right. They've made it easy. Come to our one shop. and We've got it all there. You know, all the and these sort of businesses have done this as well. But now all of a sudden, because we're all sitting in front of computer screens now shopping online, which is just a conglomerate of many small businesses to some degree, you know, excluding the Amazons of the world. But even there through drop, drop shipping, they're just providing fulfillment for small business. We're becoming aware that there are actually platforms using technology that makes small businesses big in that way. And I think this is going to worry big business. I, I kid you not. I think they're all sitting around in boardrooms now thinking, hang on, we've got to be a bit careful here because that big box store and all that parking that we provided people, now people are getting a taste of doing this stuff online and small business can actually group together, whether it's through shows like yours and groups like yours or through online platforms they can get together and start doing this themselves. And, and the reality is that the economy of our group mm. uh, leading into this was sitting at around, was, was over two and a half billion dollars, just mm. our group, okay? Mm. There is a lot of buying power within that. Absolutely. You know, one, one of the things I'm very keen to do is help people save money, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so collectively, we can put out offers, you know, whether it's the electricity wizard guys, whether it's, you know, going to insurance companies, whether it's going to you know, other service providers and going, hey, we've got this community who would love to be, uh, who are looking for an alternative. What can you do for us? Right. Absolutely. So that, that's that's one of the roles I would love to play. As you said, the other the other one is, you know, how can we have a more consistent voice okay yeah. mm. so one of one of the uh tactics of government um has has uh been kind of a divide and conquer uh you know they talk about the importance of small business but then when it comes to policy decisions we don't really get 
a seat yeah. at the table to talk about things yeah. uh, that affect 45% of their voting population because Great. we're so splintered and this, we need to get together as one and be doing Yeah, that. I we think you're right. I think that. you're right. I mean, I came up with a with a suggestion some time ago and put it out there for comment. Uh, with you know, with the billions and billions that are going to be handed out uh, to people, you know, for a start, hey, if you if you're getting the money, go and spend it in a small business in your local community. Um, you're just going to feel better, and I think that's really what we all need at the moment. But also to all the argument and all the carry on about the Uber Eats and this, that, and that, with you know, 35% commissions hurting everybody, wouldn't have been that hard for there to be a subsidy through the BAS system. Um, for those commissions um, so that there could be a rebate paid to those businesses to continue using those platforms because we all want to order through them. But, you know, it was really it was really an opportunity lost. Why not support small business food businesses by providing a rebate, a cash payment every month based on receipts and uh, invoices provided using those platforms? Um, that would have been smart in my view. And I think, too, as small business comes out of this and starts to reassess, they're going to start looking at things like, you know, and in, in my case with Carly vehicles, one of the biggest expenses for any small business growing. Mobility is going to be critical. If you don't see your clients, then it's not going to work for you. So why, why get into a long-term debt? Why have a residual payment you probably aren't budgeting for? Um, why own something that will be worthless in three or four years if what you're doing is using it as a business tool? If your business is going to change, you're going to need to change with it. Vehicles, do you need to go from a hatchback because that's all you could afford when you're a startup? Now you're making a bit of money. Maybe you need a big, bigger vehicle to actually transport goods or, or items. You know, the ability to swap and change are critical things. And that goes for a lot of things as well. It really does. And we talked about the flexibility. And, and, and yeah. we need to maintain that financial flexibility. Mm. We would, You and I were discussing, you know, as the re-emergence out. So, you know, the three phases I, I, I had is shock, awe and lockdown. Okay. Mm. And, we, you know, I, I, think we're, I think we're very close to the end of knowing... Uh, the restraints that are going to be put on us now okay Absolutely. Uh, and 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 the incentives and uh for both for survival and for long-term success that the government is going to help us with we're very close to understanding the basis of that platform so we're now entering a transition phase okay mm. now some people went hey we're going into lockdown how can i you know how can i pivot or how can i go into transition immediately and that's great um, and they've 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 done that. Um, others are going okay. So how long how long is this going to last? I still don't know. The government overnight said mm. expect a minimum of at least four weeks in the current situation. Okay, mm. so if you go business is not going to change in the next month, what do you want your business to start looking like coming out of this? And this is a question. This is a discussion that we've been having to address that situation how can i be more flexible and more efficient so Correct. that i can service my net my customer needs better and be more agile to do Correct. that and Correct. really the, and, that's you know, and in, in fairness to small business uh let's be honest who saw this coming um who saw being locked down in your house coming um this has only been going on for six to eight weeks um literally in february we were all you know just starting a new year and starting to plan and do this and everything else and within a short period of time we're all locked up in our houses so nobody was prepared for this let me just go back there it's not six to eight weeks it's four to six weeks right well, the there very you are, first right. announcement was only at the start of march right the very first one and this wasn't the lockdown announcement Correct. this is Correct. a hey we've got to work out what's happening here two Absolutely. weeks later started being we're locked down so we've only been locked inside our houses now for three to four weeks and Correct. people are going stir crazy everyone's going stir, yeah. stir crazy. and i'm um, saying to, i'm saying to people you know because of that um because it doesn't you can't operate that quickly and you're a small business so there's not the shock absorber in big business to say we've got big capital balance sheets so you know what let's let's take the next week six weeks to work it out i say to people stop breathe right jump online and start to learn how to use social networks and this sort of thing and don't make decisions. I mean, that's the critical thing is that don't make snapshot decisions and then get yourself into more trouble and then add to your stress because your isolation is going to make it worse. I think things like this, what you're doing, Kevin, is, is critical right now. It's a form of therapy for a lot of people because they need to communicate. They need to post things up. They need to get it off their chest, right? And they need to feel like they're being heard because we all got to band together mentally as much as we do uh, commercially as well. And that's a really important point. We are here to help, okay? So everyone, we're all in it together. 
And and if you're if you're one of the people that's sitting there going, hey, I, I can't believe anybody else is feeling like this. Trust us, a lot of people are. We all are. We all are. And all are. and with that, reach out for help. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you want to send if you want to send me a private message, do that. I'm yeah. talking and 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 I'm constantly asking for a range of people in that mental health field that can uh, that can offer professional assistance. I can't do that. Um, but there are a, a number of people who can offer professional assistance in that mental health field. There is, uh, there are the, a lot of support from the government into that area because they know that people mm. are going to be under greater stress at this time and greater anxiety at this time, and that's going to be uh, that's going to affect them. So there you is know, a lot of support here. Yeah, I was going to say too. You know, how how long had we been hearing the comment? It's important to work on your business, not in your business. Let's be honest. Um, that's being thrown around for the last however many years. Well, here's the news flash. You've got more time than ever now to work on your business, and it's critical we do. Uh, and the, you know, the other thing too, of course, is it's a great time to stop and breathe and think about what it is you actually want to be doing when this all happens, when this, this, this all finishes. And my, my advice to anyone that asks me is, you know, we've got to strip out everything in your business that was essentially costing you money without producing a return as much as you can. You've got to do it. You've got to be lean. You've got to, you've got to be the cheetah now, not the elephant, right? Because the elephant was, was the great symbol of a boom time when you could make 20 mistakes and you'd still bounce back because the demand was so strong, right? When it's in the lean time, you've got to basically be able to move like that. You've got to be agile and nimble. You've got to be opportunistic, right? There's got to be an opportunity there. The other thing too is when, when social media and video conferencing wasn't really something we did every day, it was almost impossible to get to any brains trust out, any, anyone else that could give you advice. Well, guess what? All of those experts are sitting on Zoom and Google Hangouts now talking to everybody. They're posting on social media. So if ever you wanted to get to an expert, now's the time to ask. You just got to ask the questions. You got to say, please help me. Give me advice. I'm prepared to listen because I want to be standing and I want to be trading and I want to be prospering when the, the upturn comes. And Carly That's as a company especially, believes that and they want to be there part of that solution as well yeah it's, it's speaking about that you've got access to experts mm. let's use the experts within our community uh first and foremost really funny thing that i've started noticing on my facebook feed and i, I would imagine some of some of you have, uh, are getting this well you know apart from you know brisbane small business and bassets um i've also started seeing uh, mckinsey co ads right yeah and mckinsey co were the standard bearer for corporate um, you know, management consultants for, for, for years and years and years, forever, basically. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, they're advertising on Facebook. And, people and it's free. Them, Facebook doesn't work for business. That's well, it. hang on, McKinsey and Co are on Facebook. Start believing it works for business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and interestingly enough, for anyone out there that's interested, you can actually uh, subscribe to their uh, free emails. They're giving it away free now. Um, and they're talking about small business issues, about uh, mindset issues, you know, where they were obviously usually working with big organizations and dealing with the big end of town, they've, they've seen the value in the fragmented nature of small business. They know there's hundreds and thousands of them out there. And some of those small businesses, by the way, will become big businesses. They're trying to plant the seed now. The biggest consulting company in the world is now trying to plant the seed and they're giving away a lot of very valuable information for free. And I'm gonna say use their free information, but then if you're looking mm -hmm. to work with someone, start looking within our community first. Yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely. Look local, right? If you go to McKinsey Co, they're gonna be charging you 750 bucks an hour and you might not even get one-on-one -on -one time for that, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like my discussions around the Anthony Robbins of the world. Yes, he has fantastic and truly awesome content, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you know, gets human interaction and that sort of stuff. However, if you sign on to one of his $5,000 programs to go and sit in a, a hall for four days and get him live on stage, there's you and 10 yeah. to 15,000 other people. If you spent that same 5,000 with a business consultant in Brisbane Small Business, the mm. value to your business working one-on-one -on -one with your specific needs, mm. and yes, you need to be working with the right ones. This is why we're auditing um, the mm. reviews of the system and that sort of stuff. But Look, look local, don't. Yeah. If we can, if we can you start gotta get, You've got to get tactical, you know, and look, I'll be, I don't mind saying because I've, I've been spending a fair bit of time looking at a lot of different groups. Um, this is by far, this is the only group that I know of that does these video chats, which is remarkable. Um, but 
these things are going to be organized. Otherwise, you're going to get ca caught up in noise. And noise is scary because noise only just confuses you, right? It's got to be organized. It's got to be sharp and targeted. And it's got to be very specific to what you need. I mean, yeah, the big, you know, the big promotional things that the Tony's, Tony Robbins of the world do, look, I see those things personally as great entertainment, right? Yeah. Um, they're oh, yeah. fantastic entertainment. And if there's great boom times and you don't have too many obstacles in your way, yeah, you need that push along. You need that person to get in your head and start pushing you along. Honestly, right now, given the level of uncertainty, given what's happening to us, most of it is out of our control, you need tactical. You need to know, what do I do tomorrow? You need somebody from your industry or somebody within your group that's within your local area that you could possibly go and see personally afterwards to say to you, hey, right now, tomorrow, you need to just do this. And then the next day, you need to do that. And you need to make these decisions in these orders because there isn't the shock absorber there anymore. Too many yeah. incorrect decisions can, can scuttle you, right? So that's why I say tactical planning right now is more important than strategic planning at this point in time. How do I maneuver and navigate through now? Because obviously if I get to the other end of now, then I'm gonna be well, well positioned to strategically plan for tomorrow. Absolutely, strategic navigation is what I call it. Um, so absolutely, we do need to be, you know, use our flexibility, use our things. Um, so John, last thoughts. Yeah, look, last thoughts, really a summary is um, park the ego. I know we all have them in business. We need one to get into it. Um, park the ego, be super open. Um, it's hard not to be cynical. It, there is an upside to all of this. Look at this, we get to do this a lot. We never got to do this when we were head down in our businesses. Spend this time working out how best to navigate out of this, all right? Because it's only gonna be a few more weeks before we're gonna to have to start doing stuff. And if you don't do it, I can guarantee you there's a competitor who will. And then it's gonna be a crowded market again. And a crowded market is harder to navigate through. Absolutely, so thanks very much. Thanks for your time this thanks, morning. Kevin. Appreciate it. Thanks from your, for your insights and, and your different approach to things. I really do appreciate Absolutely. it. Okay, thank you so much. All the best, everyone. Bye now. Bye.